Hey, this is Brian with Radical Prep. We're continuing with our full length test and we're at number 11. It says, in the equation above, B and C represent the price per pound in dollars of beef and chicken respectively, X weeks after July 1st during last summer. What is the price per pound of beef when it was equal to the price per pound of chicken? I'm just gonna reset my uh, clock here so I can get a timing. All right, so they wanna know, it looks like they wanna know when the price of the beef was about equal to the price of price per pound of chicken. So if this is my beef equation and this is my chicken, we want to know when they're equal, we're just going to set them equal. So let's write that out. Sorry, things are falling over here. All right, so let me write that out. We've got 2.35 plus 0.25x equals 1.75 plus 0.40x. All right, so let's get some things on the right sides. I'm going to move I'm going to minus 1.75, and I'm going to dust off the cobwebs in the brain here. 2.35 minus 1.75 is 2.25.6, 0 .6, 0 .6, 0 .6, 0 .6, 0 .6, 0 I'm going to minus 0.25x from this side. Now all I'm doing is getting the x's on one side and the numbers on the other. So 0.4 minus 0.25 is 0.15, 0.15x. I'm going to divide by 0.15. Don't worry about the decimals because they have the same amount. It's just 60 divided by 15, which is 4, right? So x equals 4. Now, the only thing is you might be smiling when you do this, like, oh, I'm done. Well, 4 is not an answer. So what do they want to know? What was the price per pound of beef? So we're concerned about beef. That's that equation right there, the top one. So we're going to plug in x is 4 right there. So what's 4 times a quarter? Well, 4 quarters is a dollar plus 235 is 335. That's it, you're done. We gotta move on, we gotta save time because I think I, I wasted some time explaining. It's not really wasting, but I'm trying to get this done to be realistic, like what you guys gotta do. A line in the XY plane passes through the origin and has slope of 1 7th. Which of the following points lies on the line? Well, we don't have the calculator, right? So the first thing I'm gonna do, it's a little shaky there, but I'm gonna make my XY plane. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And it says it passes through the origin. Putting a point there. And my slope is 1 7th. So the slope is 1 over 7. What does that mean? We go up 1, and then we go to the right 7. Right? Because that's just rise over run. So watch. Up 1. Over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's our first point. All right, so our first point is what? Seven, one. Is that any of those points? No. One, seven is all the way up there. No. Seven, seven is what? Seven, seven, seven would be all the way up here. Is that line going to go through seven, seven? No. So I don't even need to test any more points. Stop wasting your time trying to get the perfect answer. We know the line looks like this. The only one it could logically go through is 14, 2. It's got to keep going bu, 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 all the way down there. And you could graph it if you want to, but I'm not going to because I'm going to trust the strategies and know that I don't have to do all the work for every problem. Oh, God, except this one. <laughs> what is this mess? Uh, 13. If x is greater than 3, which of the following is equivalent to that nasty fraction? So I'm going to use a strategy from the original SAT, which is called choosing numbers, picking numbers, however you want to say it. I'm just going to pick x equals 4. Why did I pick that? It's bigger than 3. So let's plug in. 1 over. That's going to be 1 over 4 plus 2, 6, plus 1 over 4 plus 3, 7. Okay, now i got to combine these. So I'm just going to do this to both sides. So I get... 1 over 7 over 42 plus 6 over 42. Let's combine them one more time. That's 1 over 13 over 42. And finally, how do I fix this so that I can get it as one fraction? You just flip it. So 42 over 13 is our answer. Now what's the issue? That's not an answer here. So I have to go back to the x value I picked and plug it into all the equations. But I don't have time for that. I've got a fraction, so which choices are, am I going to get rid of right off the bat? Boop, gone, boop, gone. Now, I've got a fraction where the, the top number, the numerator, is the bigger number. Which fraction does that look like? Look at them real quick. I can tell right away. Can you? Choice B. 
do it out, do the work if you want to. I'm not going to do the work because I'm going to trust my gut telling me that the numerator is the bigger one and I'm not going to waste time. And plus I'm showing you guys how to get through this faster. 14. Uh, if 3x minus y equals 12, what is the value of 8 to the, or excuse me, what is the value of 8 to the x over 2 to the y? Okay. Well, I'm just checking the time here too so I can kind of push ahead. When I see 8 in a 2, I like to know and remember that 8 is really 2 cubed. Why does that help? Well, that means that's really 2 cubed to the x all over 2 to the y. Power raised to a power, what do you do? You multiply. So now you have 2 to the 3x over 2 to the y. Now you have same base and you're dividing. What do you do there? You subtract 3x minus 2y. Ah. 3x minus 2y. Well, that should look familiar because that's over there. Yeah, 3x minus y equals 12, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so um, that's really going to be 2 to the 12. I'm just substituting. 2 to the 12. Choice A. And we're good. Move on. We're getting close here. If AX plus 2 times BX plus 7 equals 15X squared plus CX plus 14 for all values of X, and A plus B is 8, what are the two possible values for C? All right, I'm looking at this and going, huh? Um, it's tempting to foil this. I'm not going to do that. I think they want you to simplify this one. So I'm going to double bubble that one. And there's some clues here, right? Because it says there's a 7 there and there's a 2 there. And these two things have to be equal. So I'm going to put a 7 there and a 2 there, which makes 14. How do I make 15? Well, I'm not even going to worry about what makes the middle because we don't know what makes the middle yet. But I know 5 times 3 gives me 15. And I've got all positive signs here, so I can put positive signs in. Now, we want to know the middle term, C, right? So when you do FOIL, which ones create the middle term in the FOIL? It's the OI, <laughs> the outer and the inner. So let's go outer. 5x times 7 is 35x. 2 times 3x is 6x. So you're going to get something over here and something over here, but your middle terms give you 41x. So does this work with the rules that they wanted us to do? Well, it says 2 times 7 is 14, and A plus B is 8. And A and B are the, the first terms, right? 5 plus 3 is 8. So we're good. So one of the terms is 41. What's nice about this is that the only answer that has 41 in there is choice D. So I got to pick it. Done. Move on. Let's see if we can get this. Ooh, we're getting close here. We are getting close. 16. If t is greater than 0 and t squared minus 4 equals 0, what is the value of t? So what squared minus 4 gives you 0? You can do the math out, but I'm really hoping you just know that 2 squared is 4. So you're looking for a number. So the answer is 2. You're going to grid that in, and you're going to get it right. Now, we only have a little bit of time left. we got three and a half minutes left, and I'm probably going to run over because I've been trying to explain things. But if I got in this situation on this test, and I'm looking, and i got my last-ditch effort now, and this is the page you're looking at, what questions are you not going to do? I'm scared of 17. I don't know what it is. I'm not doing it yet. I'm going to look right now. This looks like an easy one, number 20. It's short. I can read it fast, so let's try that. Um, a equals 5 radical 2, and 2a equals radical 2x. What is the value of x? All right, well, I want to make this look like that. So I'm going to multiply this whole thing by 2. So that means 2a equals 5 radical 2. Or excuse me, 10 radical 2, right? Because so I've got to multiply the whole thing by 2. So that's 10 radical 2. Let me write that again. That got sloppy. 10. Ugh. See what happens when you go get under pressure here? And I also know that 2a equals radical 2x from the other one. So if that's 2a and that's 2a, just set them equal. 10 radical 2 equals radical 2x. I'm going to square both sides, square both sides. So I get 100 times 2 equals 2, and that's under there, 2x. Divide by 2, divide by 2, we get x 
equals 100. Okay. All right. So we're down to the gun here. Let's do number. Let's do number 19. Um, in a right triangle, one angle measures x, where sine of x equals four fifths. What is the cosine of of the other one? Um, there's a there's a reason why this is the other one, but for now we'll just draw a right angle. We'll put x in there, and you should hopefully know that the sine of that. Remember Sokotoa? So -ka toa Okay. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse, 4 over 5. You should really know that that's 3. It's a, it's a classic Pythagorean triple, 3, 4, 5, if you've heard that before. So now, basically this is saying, what is the cosine? Honestly, what they're asking you is for this angle. How would you know that? I'm going to go over on time right now to explain it to you because if I was doing the test, I could probably get through this pretty quick. I'm going to explain it to you, though, and just make sure you know why that's that angle. So how many how many degrees are in a triangle? We know 180, right? Let's say I call this question mark. I had no idea. Um, I have no idea what that is. So all the angles are, are 90 from here, plus x, plus question mark. All those things equal 180. If I minus 90 and minus x, minus 90, minus x, boom, boom, I'm going to get that the question mark, question mark equals 180 minus 90 is 90 minus x. So that's kind of weird. Isn't that what they asked for? 90 minus x? So really it turns out that the missing side, and I think I'm at, I'm at time, so you can call that, look at that. The, the proctor's like, put that pencil down. They're staring you down in the room and you're going, oh God, let me get this in. All right, so time is up. I try my best to make it and do this thing under timed while explaining it. Keep that in mind. Don't give me problems on YouTube because I didn't finish in time and I was trying to explain. But, um, okay, so let me get back to my point. I feel bad that I didn't finish. So the missing, the missing angle is 90 minus X because when we, when we try and figure it out by um, adding up all the angles to 180, we always know, we know that this other one this 90 minus x here is the one they're talking about. So they want to know the cosine of this angle. Well, what's cosine? Adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's 4 over 5. Okay? So I think another thing here, and I'll just write it in. You can circle it. 4 divided by 5. Um, on test day, um, or not on test day, when you guys are doing these trig problems, usually you can use your calculators and it's real easy. This is actually like some trig rule I forget what it is like the sine of one angle is the cosine of the of the opposite one or the cosine of one angle is the sine of the opposite one. it's like complementary angles you guys will let me know I totally forget I haven't taught trig in a while but uh, you'll let me know all right so I'm super embarrassed I didn't finish during time and I thought I could while trying to explain things it's actually tougher than you think uh, number 18 so let's see I got these two equations here according to the system of equations above what is the value of X so what I would do in this situation, I'm assuming like if I was jammed for time, I would just subtract these two equations. X minus X cancels out. Y minus 2Y is negative Y. And that's negative 9 minus negative 25. I'm just going to write it out because it's annoying. So that means that's keep, flip, change, KFC. I don't know if you ever heard that. Sometimes it helps you do these problems. So that's going to be 16, right? So that means y equals negative 16. What do I do with that? Um, y equals negative 16. I can plug back in. So we got x minus 16 equals negative 9. So that should be um, add 16, add 16. So x equals 7. x equals 7. OK. Um, and finally, for the one that I avoided, which I actually think was a good thing, even though I, I probably, the amount of time it would take me to read the other one. So sometimes you got to do that on the test. You got to decide, well, what do you think I can finish? What do I think I can finish in a minute? And I would have taken the two smaller ones. Will that always work? Maybe not. Who knows? But it wasn't a bad idea. 
Okay, final one. A summer camp counselor wants to find a length x in feet across a lake as represented in the sketch above. The lengths represented by a, b, a, a, b, e, b, b, d, and c, d on the sketch were determined to be 1,800 feet, 1,400 feet, all right, 1,800, 1,400, blah, blah, blah. Let me write them out, write them in. I can't speak now. I'm feeling so bad I didn't finish. A, b, 1,800 feet. That's there. Okay. Um, e, b was 1,400. See, this would have taken a long time. BD was 700. Okay. And what was the last one? CD was 800. CD was 800. Okay. Um, segments AC and DE intersect at B. Okay. So what? And angle AEB, AEB, okay, this one is equal to this one. They give you the, the symbol there. What is the value of X? All right. Well, one thing I always like to do is label what else you know. This angle is equal to that one, right? Vertical angles. So when you have two triangles that share two angles, by default, the third one is also the same in each one. So that one is equal to that one. And because of that, you have similar triangles. It's angle, angle, angle. So why the heck does that help you? Well, what you can do is you can make a little ratio up. So I want to find x, right? So the angle opposite that one or the side opposite, I really should say, x. So x to 800, watch what I'm going to do here, equals, now we got to find ones that are also, I started with the big triangle. So x over 800 is equal to 1400 all over, now what's opposite the 3? All right, we got, good, we got a number, 700. So now, you don't have to do cross multiplication. What's 1400 over 700? Or what's 14 over 7 is 2. So, or you can do it the other way. 700 times 2 is 1400. So 800 times 2 is what? 1600. And that's your final answer. Yeah, that one probably would take me a while. So listen, I hope that's to give you an idea of the pacing. Uh, when you're doing this SAT. I gotta be honest, this is the first time I've tied myself and tried the tutor, and it's pretty tough. So you guys have a, a task in front of you, and what I can re recommend to you is study a lot, do a lot of practice, do time conditions. Don't sit there and, oh, I'm gonna do five problems, I'm gonna go watch TV, have a sandwich, like, do time conditions, because that will get you in the mind frame of trying to get ready for this test. And uh, keep a lookout for, some, for uh, my future videos, because I definitely wanna help you out, raise your score, and uh, any questions, email me. Good luck, I'll talk to you later.